Kevin McCarthy's ouster makes a government shutdown in November more likely. Welcome to Law and Society. I'm going to talk briefly about this mess that we find ourselves in, where there are major crises happening all around the world and in the United States, and there is no Speaker of the House. So if you are new to my channel, please like and subscribe, and let's dive in. In my videos about Kevin McCarthy's vote and his ouster, I had this dream. I suppose you could call it naive, but it's kind of seems that the decisions that the Democrats made with eight Republicans was the naive move of ousting Kevin McCarthy or short sighted, if not naive. There was supposed to be cooperation, but the cooperation happened in a completely destructive manner. The cooperation that should have happened was Democrats joining a vast majority of Republicans to keep Kevin McCarthy as Speaker of the House so that they could have drafted a more permanent long-term spending bill in the next 45 days before the November 17th deadline and possible shutdown. The possibility now of a far right, more right of Kevin McCarthy speaker becoming a reality, you know, has made so many people say, oh, the Democrats should have worked with Republicans to keep Kevin McCarthy. Oh, and Kevin McCarthy's ouster makes... Uh, you know, the shutdown more likely. Well, you know, that was one of the more foreseeable outcomes. And I, I feel like leaders of the Democratic Party failed to appreciate what would happen. You know, the chances of Hakeem Jeffries becoming Speaker of the House because of uh, a number of Republicans switching over, that is as much a possibility as the Republicans doing exactly what they have been doing for the last three years and doubling down on party before country and voting someone like Jim Jordan into the into the, the office of Speaker of the House. Jim Jordan is not only unqualified because he is not the more not not one of the sharpest crayons in the box, but he also has connections to January 6th. Anybody who has connections to January 6th, who spoke with Donald Trump or anybody involved in the White House on January 6th, like Jim Jordan did, is not qualified to lead the House of Representatives and the Congress where that attack happened. He has been defending Donald Trump and has been talking about alternative theories and has been a MAGA proponent putting up a blockade on every single investigation ongoing regarding January 6th and election interference. And we expect that person to be a fair Speaker of the House? So... We are in a quandary right now where we have, we as a country must now see if the Democrats can convince enough Republicans to join them to have Speaker Jeffries, the first time there's been a minority coalition government that in recent history where the majority party, uh, party does not have the speaker, speakership. Or we have Jim Jordan and uh, Scalise, Representative Scalise. I don't know. He, I think he's the, he's the second uh, highest ranking. And third highest is Jim Jordan. But Jim Jordan has Donald Trump's endorsement, you know, because that is so important for a body politic, for people to listen to Donald Trump. I hope you can hear the sarcasm in my voice. So we have about 45 days for a speaker and for a long-term spending plan because we couldn't hold our horses for 45, 47 days, keep Kevin McCarthy speaker and get those 126 people who voted for the stopgap legislation 
to also vote for a long-term bill. We didn't, and I say we here as Democrats, Democrats didn't think that was more important. They thought what was more important was Kevin McCarthy's ouster and this display that the GOP can't govern. The GOP can't govern. It is self-evident, and Republicans themselves are saying it, that the, the uh, GOP can't govern. But does that mean that the GOP will hand over the speakership to Hakeem Jeffries? I don't know how likely that is. I hope that happens. I hope 18 of the districts that uh, uh, went Republican, uh, voted Republican for House, but were Biden districts, have some consideration for switching over to the Democrat, Democrat side. But, you know, 18 of them are in those districts, but we can't, we can't put, I wouldn't put my money on that. I wouldn't put my political money on that. So it just creates a stress at a time, an unprecedented stress, mind you, because this has never happened before, at a time when our, com our country could have done with a period of normalcy. We could have done with a period of bipartisanship in the House. So with that said, if you are new to my channel, please like and subscribe and stay connected so that you're aware of what's happening and you can hold your representatives accountable.